<laughs> the day will never end, Mr. Craig. Oh, they call it the endless day. You want to know why? <laughs> yes, I do. Because you're going <laughs> to introduce this guest. <laughs> That's a great reason. <laughs> Did you ask me is that what that was? Well, would you tell me who it is? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Jason, why are you laughing, Mr. Jason? This is the not so new kid on the block. Becky Isbell, balling, building, Whoa. better, Whoa. and hanging Ooh. tough. Whoa, 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 hanging tough. Boom. Buckle up. It's the Insurance Dudes Podcast. Boom. Boom. We got Becky. Becky. Hey, guys. How you doing? How you doing? I'm amazing. Like I said, every day I wake up is a good day, so you're never going to hear me complain. Yeah. Oh, you're love six it. Six feet above the ground, things are working. Absolutely. When both he, he hit the floor, it's like, oh, Lord, she's awake. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome there yeah. you go but we're off to a good start i'll say yeah that's for sure i would yeah. say that too mr yeah. jason so becky we asked everybody one question first and that is what was your first concert and i want to go back to the earliest concert even right. if it was like barney or something back. even if are you, you are were you trying to say yeah okay so it's kind of a two-part answer because I, I am a dude podcast listener. So, um, so my first my first concert was supposed to be New Kids on the Block in the sixth grade. Oh, so solid. good. So solid. This is not supposed to be. Um, I grew up in a very small town in Oklahoma. And both of my parents were very conservative, and New Kids on the Block was quote unquote the devil music. A little racy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I say, and keep in mind, this was late 80s early 90s I don't want to date myself and so there was no ticket master or anything like that you had to like call in Dallas and get the ticket and so my grandparents had given me some birthday money and I had saved I was like mom dad I got it all my friends got to go with the exception of myself and my best friend Tanya um, and we had to stay home so you were hanging tough I was hanging tough right oh. right stuff baby oh. so <laughs> that being said, fast forward after I became an adult and I already had my daughter in the year 2000, my very, I was 21, 20 when I went to my very first concert and it was the Testicle Festival in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Wait, and, wait yes, what? You heard, you heard that right. It was the Testicle, testicle, fest, festival. testicle festival. Those don't still, rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, Chris Ledoux. He was a country music artist. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, he and Garth Brooks. Um, you know, Oklahoma's kind of known for their country music artists. And so, uh, amazing show. The man had just had surgery. And one of his things that he did was at the end of every concert, he wrote a mechanical bull. So, that was, <laughs> that was my first experience in the concert world. And then, um, going back to New Kids, three years ago, my husband, they actually came to Austin, which is about 60 miles from me. And my husband for the Christmas. Devil's Town. Yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> husband bought me two VIP accesses because he knew my friend Tanya and I. Or actually, oh! Let me, let me preface it. He gave me the money for it. And he said, oh. my only ask is that you don't make me go. I was like, done. So that was in December. <laughs> I don't want you to go. So. <laughs> and so... In February of that year, we had to we had a family emergency, and I had to spend my new kids on the black money. So I've still yet to see. Uh, new kids. So, I was so excited for you. Well, I they're know. still touring. They, aren't they, they are. They they have one ch concert this year in Boston, and I have a feeling I will be there. So. Are you will really? You? Will you really go? I, if I I'm working with my friend Tanya that still has not gotten to go since sixth grade, oh, she, and if we, she would go. That, yeah. That's gotta I, go. Yeah, you gotta bring Tanya too. You guys yeah. have to. So, yeah. Um, it, I mean, so it's kind of a long story, but yeah. Uh, Chris go and first. then go take a picture, and then we'll post it in the group and everything. Okay, it, I can do that. Yes, I can do <laughs> that. Do I love that. it. New yeah. kids. That's and you right. know what? Yes. What we want to do is get every single person that's been to a new kids concert just to, you know, post, and it's just yeah. Great. I love me some new kids, <laughs> like. Uh, I was total fangirl. Still am. My family makes fun of me all the time, but total fangirl. So yeah. are we all though of those first of those first few artists? 
Oh yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Not Come really on, Craig. Well, Craig's us. like, no. no. <laughs> I was not. You're not? No, I was more alt, alt, alt music back then, and then I got into the dead and all that. But, but um. Yeah, but who was your first uh, artist? Like whoever that was, you're still a huge fan of them, right? Uh, the first album that I owned was Blondie. That's you a still good like one. Blondie. Eh, no, but I who like are you really into? First, when, the first artist that you're like, dude, I love this. Yeah, maybe, maybe Boston, like, like classic rock. My dad used to play it in the car in the eight track player. <laughs> but see, you're even saying maybe. Like, mine maybe. was Michael Jackson, hands down. Still love it. Hey. Like, throw, oh, yeah. throw okay. him on. Well, big, big artist with that we listen to, like the kids, on, like a different kids on the block, us kids on the block playing outside. Probably Michael Jackson, because. Okay the girl down the street that, that we, you know, we grew up. I mean, I'm still friends with her. So um, yeah, she was a huge Michael Jackson. Her mom was a huge Michael Jackson fan. That surprised me because awesome. most girls are like big Michael, Michael Bolton fans back yeah. then. So, <laughs> I had his tape and I secretly played it in my car and kept it for my parents. So yeah. <laughs> there's a really good lonely Island skit that has Michael Bolton in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Captain Jeff Sparrow, something or other. Well, look at that. Now that we lost everybody, let's 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 talk about insurance. <laughs> oh right. yay! yay. <laughs> so, you know, you got into the business when? How long ago? I got into the business in You're good friends with Laura Harris. Um, yeah, I, I know Laura Harris. She was actually yeah. my mentor. Mm -hmm. um still is a lovely lady and like i said probably you guys had asked about their favorite podcast last week she's probably been my favorite podcast um she's very open in helping new agents and so uh in 2015 i was um looking for something to do long story short my husband and i we have a maintenance and construction business that's very successful and i was actually at a networking event and a 30 year agent came up to me and said, I'm ready for you to take over my legacy. Never dreamed about insurance. And I said, not just no, but heck no, I hate insurance. Uh, and he said, that's why you would be the perfect agent because you are a customer and you know the ins and outs. And so long story short, um, I shadowed that agent for six months. I said, I'll come shadow you, work for you for free for six months. And then after six months, if I like it, I'm going to purchase the book. So I did. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. And like I said, I, I love it. I love my job. I, I, you know, what we do is so important and people don't realize it. You know, we're protecting yeah. everything that matters most to you, your home, and most importantly, your family. So sure. I, get, I get to do that every day and I love it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's remarkable how the general public isn't aware of the ramifications of making a poor decision when it comes to insurance and also the ramifications of a bad agent writing bad policies. Right. I mean, well, and I, when I had that, that sales call, cause I still sell, um, I, you know, I say, you look, I'm looking for two things. We all know price is important. Um, but most importantly, I'm looking at coverage because the average American is $400 away from bankruptcy. That meaning that if you were to have an accident, one, are you gonna be able to pay that deductible? And two, are you gonna be taken care of? Because minimum liability is not gonna be enough. And so I take time with my customers and have these detailed conversations and, and build that relationship. And you know, because of it, my retention is high. My customers, not tooting my own horn, but they love me because I'm gonna educate them and I'm not just gonna sell them a policy. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so that's, that's the day, five years, still love it. Um, love what I do. I love coming to work every day. Uh, it's not a job to me. It's a kind of a passion. Kind of a, you know, mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So when you first started, uh, did you start captive? I started captive. I did, uh, did that for about two and a half years, had the opportunity to go independent. And so I went and um, I, I love it. I, you know, I set my own hours and I, one of the things my husband and I, we did everything backwards, kind of backtracking. We met, had a baby, got, started a business together and then got married. So all that was, what did your parents say about that? They were not happy. I was 30 years old. <laughs> And I show up, I, I actually just told this story today. I took my parents to dinner. I was so scared to tell them. Oh. I was 30 years old. And I had, at that time, I still had my, I, I had an 11 year old. I was a single mom. Mm -hmm. 
And so we show up, we said, mom, we'll take you to dinner. And I made her friends go too, so they wouldn't make a scene. <laughs> and I said, oh, by the way, this is James. And he is now the father of my baby that I'm going to have at the same time my sister is pregnant. <laughs> Oh. And my dad just turned red, like, but they couldn't make a scene because that, you know, would have been crowded on. <laughs> my husband just stays like, you win on that one. <laughs> oh, that's Very so strategic. Funny. Yeah. So, um, and actually that soon to be 11 year old sitting in the back. And um, that's one thing I love about my gig is I don't ever miss a school pickup or drop off. So, so this gig yeah. allows me to be, allows me to be a mom. And that's why we, you know, started our own businesses because prior I was working 60 hours a week for someone else. And, you know, I didn't have that luxury. So um, now you're working 80 hours a week for yourself. Yeah. No. I tell everybody, I said, you know, they're like, how do you love your owning your own business? I said, I love it. I sleep like a baby. You know, I wake up every two hours crying. So, <laughs> 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 so yeah. Yeah. But it has That's huge awesome. rewards, right? The end of oh, the absolutely. Table, absolutely. As long as you love it. Like, you know, there's, we talk to a lot of people and there's some people that, that, do business ownership and don't love what they're doing. And, it, and it's, you know, that's such, that's, uh, it's just, just tough. You got to stick with what your passion is and, yeah. um, and find and that know, spot in your business, you know, to do and that. And I've listened to other um, people guests on your shows before. And then there's one common theme is you got to get plugged in, like whatever, you, whether you're a captive independent, you got to find your tribe. Um, I was fortunate that Laura Harris embraced me and love her to pieces but she was like, hey, you know, showing the ropes and here's this. Because even though I had worked in the agency for six months, they don't teach you at all at corporate that all this stuff that goes on. So, um, you know, True. the ins and outs and they don't teach you how to when this, you know, mom comes in crying, uh, what to do and the processes that go through, is, you know, a claim or, you know, upselling for liability. They don't teach you any of that. And yeah, so, the corporate company teaches you just amount of, 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 about as much at, of the agency as taking the insurance license test does. Thank you. Thank you. They don't, don't teach you oh, any of that stuff. Uh, cool. You know, you do learn how to take a payment. This is yeah. true. This is true. <laughs> I, I will say that. Yes, I know how to take a payment. So, but again, it's just important to find that tribe and find yeah. your people and surround you. People who, you know, have the same struggles that you have day to day. Uh, you know, I, I tell everybody, I get yelled at every day because, and it's not me. And it took me a long time to realize that, you know, people never call their insurance agent when they're happy. They're right. either their price went up or they have a claim or nobody. I've done this for five years and not one time has anyone ever called and said, hey, thanks for being my agent. And I'm so glad my rates went up. <laughs> Never has happened. I don't know about you. Craig's done this a lot longer than I have. Jason, I know you're still, what, in three years or so? But I do whatever yeah. I can to not answer that phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smart. Smart on your part. I so, don't even have one, to be yeah, totally that's, honest. That's funny. <laughs> I don't so, so, yeah. So, yeah, I don't have yeah. the headset that connects to the computer so that I can answer the phone. So, oh, well, it's, that, it's, that it's, it's, I ordered it. It's coming. Yeah, I keep mine. <laughs> Mine's right here. But it's so. true. Yeah. You get a phone call for the rate increases. You get no phone call for the decreases. And there are oh, decreases. Never. It's never happened. Never happened. Yeah. I'm still waiting. Maybe after this podcast, somebody will call and say, thanks for being my agent. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. That you know, would be funny. Freak them out. Yeah. In the past yeah. lifetime. And it's similar across industries. In my past lifetime, when it was a Merrill Lynch, if, if the client called, it was either the market was crashing, they want to sell. And then you have to tell them, look, you, no. You don't sell when it's going down and um, or if it's if it's up, then they're calling to to say how proud they are of their picks. Right. So, you know, there, there was never a, a, a thing where that, you know, where you're winning because of it. So, you know, it's, it, yeah. it's, like, you know. it's, it's the nature of our business. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. Well, so so you had Laura as a mentor, any other things that, that, that as your, as your career developed and, and you're, you're, you're doing these things that, that you did or people that you looked up to that helped? Well, it was, um, like I said, going to any event, especially mm -hmm. insurance related event that I could get into. When I first started, I appointed in March of 16, uh, was when I, officially wasn't I think it was March maybe in May anyway whatever it was a month after they had in here in Texas we had Texas uh, we had a big leaders forum a group and it was just a bunch of Texas agents getting together talking about insurance didn't know a single person 
but mm -hmm. I drove to San Marcos. I was like, I'm here, both feet in, like, and just be a sponge, like get, surround yourself by good people. People come in with the chip on your shoulder thinking you know everything, um, regardless of whether you've had prior insurance experience or not, just be a sponge and be open to learning new things. Cause I learned something new every day uh, from different carriers, from different agents, uh, you know, just be that person. Don't ever think that you're too good to stop learning. And, mm -hmm. And then be that person like Laura Harris, pay it forward. When a new agent comes on, be that person. Like you guys are great about, you know, embracing people, uh, you know, say, Hey, I've been there. I know what it's like. Uh, I know exactly what you're going through. Here's what I did. Here's, you know, what I wish I would, someone would have told me. Um, so yep. that would be my advice. Get plugged in and just be a sponge and don't, you know, be, have that big chip on your shoulder saying, no, I don't need this. Mm, no, I mean, I, continue to need it. That's why we started this podcast and it's helped. It's paid off in dividends oh. um, within the last year, incredibly. And it's like, yeah. like, it's amazing. Like you have yeah. to, you have to have that. Like you have to be Absolutely. around good players to know the moves to make, to bounce ideas off of just to be playing the game. Like you, you'll never, it's a never ending you don't get to this point where you learn enough and okay, peace. I'm out. <laughs> right. Exactly. Never, never. And I said, there's something new as y'all know, you've done this on a, our industry changes all the time and you know, you learn something new. Uh, you know, I don't know about y'all, but software changes. <laughs> right. So, um, so it's just important to surround yourself with those people and learn and, uh, you know, and then pay it forward. My husband and I are huge pay it forwards. So we've been very, very blessed the last, almost 11 years as being self-employed. And so we, we give those blessings back. So, so yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, a couple thoughts on captive versus indie since that was the big, uh, in the last five years. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big switch. So November of last year, I celebrated my first year as an independent. And mm -hmm. uh, as with anything, you know, you have your, your pros and cons, but I, I love being independent. I'm a true independent agent. Um, I set my own office hours. Uh, I don't have staff. I know that's kind of frowned upon, but um, I don't like babysitting people. And I was doing a lot of that when I had to have three full-time staff. Uh, and I just, I'm very good at time management. So I'm my salesperson. I'm the housekeeper cleaning the bathroom. I'm, you know, my service agent. Um, and I love it. I love the gig. That's awesome. Is there anything yeah. that you miss about captive? I miss my agents and captive. I miss the, like I said, the, uh, and, and we're still friends. I mean, now we're great. You know, we have social media, we're friends. We have these electronic devices that we can, you know, text someone, but I miss the forums and seeing people and the celebrating, yay, you hit bonus or, you know, um, yeah, you're gonna go on your trip this year. You know, I do miss that part of it. Mm. And uh, I will say, you know, in over a year, I don't have walk-in traffic. Everything we do is online. Um, so I kind of miss those coffees with the customers, those relationships, because I, you know, that's my personality. Um, but so those and, coffee talks the coffee talks yeah. Coffee talks. <laughs> coffee talks. <laughs> so yeah so there is a, like i said i think any gig whether you're captive or indie it's going to have its pros and cons um, sure. and you just got to figure 100%. out what works for you what works best for you and your family if you're married and you have children or uh you know and for me it, it was indie you know um yeah. like i said i still have um, a soon to be 11 year old and to be a grandma so um wow, and that congrats. Little, that congrats that flexibility of uh and my daughter's four hours away so i can work from home you know or i can work mm -hmm. from a hotel or whatever i don't have to have you know an office so that's awesome that's awesome yeah so that's yeah. huge powerful it's so funny because it's always um you know the grass we're such in a, a society where the grass is always greener but right. it's like dude uh, you're talking about marginal differences here and there and in different areas. It's like, come on. Like, cause if you, when you actually get there, you know, let you, let's say it's that, you know, I make, Oh, if I just made this much or I did this, it's like, there's right. pros and cons to everything. Just enjoy totally. the process. Yeah. My dad growing up again, Southeast Oklahoma, we have a lot of sayings, but he's like, yeah, the grass is greener because it has more manure, you know? 
So and that's putting it for that's putting it for radio terms. <laughs> but, um, I like that just, one. Yeah, you just have to figure out what works for you. Again, um, you know, you are the great thing about our industry is we are our own bosses, and um, you know, captive can work good for that person, you know, and then indie can work for someone else, and it's just, it's it's up to you. I mean, it's it's endless. So I know a lot of agents who have both you know they're not maybe not supposed to but husband does one wife does another and mm. and and they make the most of it so that would be awesome i yeah. i don't know if i could be married to an insurance agent <laughs> I, I you know i it's hard enough being married to my business partner <laughs> with our construction business. i just don't know if because you know we're kind of add and a little high strung and um you know my husband right. says you know, here's the world or here's Becky and here's the world. It revolves around me. And I'm like, holy, <laughs> yeah. you know, but I don't know if I could be married oh, to another me. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's so funny. So you've yeah. done so many changes uh, in the last five years with agencies and stuff. Um, how have you kept with such, so much positivity? Like you're obviously a very positive person. Well, thank you. I, you know, we're very blessed. Um, I said, every day I wake up is a good day. And I think it's all mindset. It's what you make the most of it. I say, even on a bad day, I'm going to find something good in it. Uh, you know, I was a single mom for 11 years. I put myself through college. Um, you know, my parents helped me when they could, but they, they didn't, couldn't help me financially and time wise. And again, you just make the most of your situation. When I hear somebody um, down in the dumps, I just tell them, I, say, I don't attend pity parties. I don't have time in my life and you know, not every day is going to be shooting fireworks out of your butt, happy and glory, but you know, every day <laughs> Craig's laughing at me, um, <laughs> but there's good in every day. You just have to find it. And you know, it may be that yep. day you say, Hey, I woke up, you know, or, Hey, I helped protect a family, you know, that didn't have life insurance and now they have half a million just in case something happens to that breadwinner. Um, I, I truly, I know it sounds cliche, but life is what you make of it. Um, there were plenty of times when I could have been knocked down and said, I'm not doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, I was telling the story today, when on our four-year wedding anniversary, that Friday, and again, we were small business owners. We didn't have a lot of money then. Uh, we were going to have an adult day. I was getting ready to send our son to daycare, and he decided he was going to stroke out on me that day and had his first mini stroke. And oh. I will tell you that was life changing. Um, I was surrounded. We lived in, we live in Colleen. My family's five hours away. Uh, and I will tell you, my insurance agent met me at the ER and he already had, we had um, the short term disability. Um, and he met me at the ER and he filled out all the forms for me. And that no could have been one of the worst. Yeah. All I had to do was sign. He said, you know, I know James is going to be in the hospital for a couple of days. Let's go ahead and file these claims. And to me, it just so happens that was the agent I bought the book from too. Side note. Um, no way. Yeah. <laughs> wow, so, what a story. Um, yeah. So I could have, that could have been the worst day of my life. And thankfully it wasn't. Um, but mm. finding good in that day. And then again, surrounding yourself with that tribe of people who are going to take care of you and be with you. Um, and you know, I gotta admit, he set the par that day for insurance agents. I was like, you know, when I thought I was like, I want to be like you. So, yeah. um, so yeah, I just, I find the good and the positive and just keep moving forward. I'm, you know, like I, said, I don't attend pity parties and I don't let, you know, life get me down. And guaranteed he had other stuff going on that day when oh, he heard that he dropped it, yep. came to you. I promise you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. And like I said, I, it just, it, it literally, just brought me to tears because I was like, who does this? Like, you know, Seriously? nobody's ever done. That. Yeah. He actually beat my mother-in-law to the hospital. Um, and I had, wow. a, um, and I, he found out because I was supposed to be on a conference call with a group of team leaders that day. Um, and I just said, guys, I can't, you know, here's what's going on. Send a text. Next thing I know he's there. And, and wow. then I had, yeah. And again, I had you know, my in-laws were here. My mother-in-law was here, but I had people, come get at that time the baby the four-year-old took him to preschool and just i mean again that tribe that tribe of people so, yep yeah that is the best story ever yeah so becky yeah. what would be the number one piece of advice you would give to any agent 
any new agent, uh, I'm going to go back to the tribe um, get plugged in. Yeah. We're not out here alone. Um, it may seem like it at days. You may seem that, you know, I'm just here, you know, I'm drowning. And, and I think we've all had those days. It's like, I'm never going to get caught up. But that's when you make the phone calls to the Laura Harris's and the Javier's and, you know, the Craig's and the Jason say, look, I'm just having a bad day. And, uh, you know, because you've been there, you know that. And that's when you lift that person up and say, it's okay, take a deep breath, but you're going to get right back to it because you're a phenomenal agent. And what, again, what we do is important. Um, I, I, I make the joke, I tell everybody, I am a professional problem solver. You know, again, I am fixing, I'm joke. filing a claim for you. I'm fixing your rate. <laughs> I'm just, I never tell anybody I'm an insurance agent because they fly out the door. I always, I joke mm. and say, you know, a <laughs> pat. A pastor and I walk into a networking event and everybody scatters because I'm going to try to sell them life insurance and the pastor's going to talk to him about Jesus. And those are two things nobody wants to be talking about. So, <laughs> but I would say get plugged in, find your tribe, yeah. find your people. And, you know, there are so many, I was fortunate enough. We have social media now. There are so many Facebook groups out there. There's a, a female Facebook group. There's one, you know, your guys are out there. Um, and just get plugged in and, you know, and don't just be the person watching on the sidelines, be active because, and be that support for somebody and, and you know, pay them back. So, Love it. Yeah. Drop the mic, Becky. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, that's incredible. Thank and you. it's yeah, so true. Awesome. We all need a support system. Absolutely. You guys are awesome, awesome, by the way. I'm, I'm truly digging the podcast. Uh, it, I look forward to it, you know, the coffee talks and I'm still waiting for my face <laughs> to be on a mug. So, and, and, That's awesome. and I love that you guys are including in, you know, dudettes. Now I get to be, I get to join that club. So, do that. We need more awesome, dudettes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Bring on so, the dudettes. Yeah. I mean, we're, we've got our own little, you know, thing going on, but I say we're pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Totally. Awesome. Honestly, honestly, the, the, the women in the insurance agency, brings so much to the table to compare with men <laughs> especially as we get a, a big staff um now in our agency it's like it's like the women bring so much to the table mm. yep do you, do you feel like sometimes Warm you have a mom up. in the room because i i you know everybody calls me the mom i have a mom bag i'm like oh you need a crayon it's in my purse you know yeah and <laughs> you know we go to different things and i ask becky she has it you know because <laughs> Um, and I, sometimes that's what I feel like when there's a bunch of women together, it's like, there's a bunch of moms here who are going to take care of it. Oh, you need a bandaid? Here's your bandaid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And on the sales side, we really see like the, uh, well, and the service side, but like more, there's so much more empathy and like, oh, that's the way to do it. Not like the guys, the guys are just right. dumb. The guys, like, well, great, but you know, I'm not including myself on that. So that's yeah. not. <laughs> There's actually a great book. Uh, it's one of my favorite books. It's called Networking in Sex. It's not what you think. And it go, it can go back to the sales world because guys and girls are different. Like totally. females naturally are more compassionate and understanding. Guys, I yes. love you, but you're like, boom, boom, let's get this done. Move on to the next one. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going right. to ask about you and your family and your kids. And guys typically don't they're like boom okay this is how much right. you're gonna put it on a visa or a mastercard um yep. you know and then i'm gonna make notes you know in the system and say hey you know her nana was sick and you know ask about nana next time and, and y'all just gonna skip right on through that so it's a great book totally. it's a fun book and kind of helps you understand you know we are different creatures so love it yeah love it Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you yeah, so much. You, Becky. Yeah, you guys keep doing up the good work. And I, again, I'm flattered I got to be one of the dudettes. And if you guys ever need something, you know, reach out. Thank if you're you. ever in Texas, hey, you know, I'm I'm the great place, great Fort Hood. I get to see it right out my front window. So nice. You guys oh, over here awesome. offer up an invitation for you guys. Cool. Thank Thanks. you. Appreciate it. <laughs> if you're ever I, in our neck of the woods, yeah, we'll check <laughs> in with you. Out. Don't Come be on, surprised when these days I knock on your door and say, "Oh, I'm here." <laughs> Perfect. Uh, right on. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. We'll see you. All, all right, you guys have a great day. You too. Right, you bye. Too. Hey, you've got to check out the Insurance Dudes Inner Circle coming soon where you get extended interviews as well as live coffee talks in our private Facebook group. Join the mailing list today at the insurancedudespodcast.com.
Hey, thanks for checking out the Insurance Dudes. Hey, please subscribe. We got some really great stuff coming out.